Jags Nation. This is the Action Sports Jags Post Game Show, sponsored by Farrah and Farrah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars. All right, you just watched it. The Jacksonville Jaguars improved to four and two and are your leaders in the AFC South with a 37-20 win over the Indianapolis Colts. But unfortunately, there's a bit of news here at Games End that we're kind of awaiting as we welcome you to the postgame show. I'm Dan Hicken. Brent's in the locker room gathering sound. And we're awaiting Doug Peterson because on his last play of the game, Trevor Lawrence inexplicably ran a bootleg out to the side and got sacked and got his knee twisted and did not return to the game. Up in the press box, they announced him with an injury to his knee and officially listed him as questionable to return. He did not return. C.J. Beathard came in in victory formation, and the Jaguars won. We're going to dive into the game, but that's the big story because the Jags have a game in four days, all right? Uh, they play the Saints on Thursday night, and an injury to Trevor right there, if he has to miss a game, would be really unfortunate and really at an inopportune time as the Jaguars just, you know, they won by 17, so you want to stay positive, but it just felt like they, you know, at times they just didn't seem to play very well today. And, uh, you know, it was a weird game because they got on top of the Colts and then the Colts had to throw. Gardner Minshew threw the ball 55 times. He was sacked three times. He threw three interceptions. He is a backup quarterback who will dump the ball off throughout the game. When he went down the field, the Jags feasted. You know, they, Cisco had an interception. Darius Williams had an interception. So the Jags got their hands on the ball. Uh, let's look at the numbers. You see Trevor was 20 of 30, I believe, Liv, for 181 yards. A couple touchdowns and a pick that looked like to be a miscommunication pick uh, where Evan Ingram was breaking free. He tried to hit Kirk on a timing route, and Kirk wasn't where I think he thought he would be. So uh, that one hurt, but uh, overall... He was fine. He wasn't as good as last week. He was okay. He threw a couple touchdown passes. And again, when the Jags aren't okay, they still scored 37 points, but the defense got him the ball. They, you know, settled for a bunch of long field goals from Brandon McManus, who deserves some credit because I know he had at least two 50-yarders. But Minshew throwing 55 times is not the Indianapolis Colts. Now, it's interesting because the Colts won the toss, and they elected to take the ball first. And they came out and nickel and dimed the Jags to death. Chewed up a half a quarter. Went on like a 16-play drive. Got it all the way down to the inside the red zone. Had to settle for a field goal, which was big. Jags answered with a touchdown. Got a pick, got a touchdown. Suddenly we're up 14-3. to And the Colts aren't going to be able to play from behind this year very well. So uh, a great win for the Jaguars to improve to 4-2. and two. That's certainly the good news. All right. Again, the bad news, Trevor got his knee wrenched at the end of the game. He looked like he was okay when he was walking around the field and congratulating everybody. We'll see what happens, and we'll hear from Doug Peterson. And if they tell us he has to have an MRI, well, then that won't be good news. And again, just speculation, but they did announce in the press box. I do want people to understand they did announce in the press box that he was injured and questionable to return. He did not go back in. C.J. Beathard went in for the kneel downs, and the Jags got the win. The Colts' defensive line was good up front, especially in the interior. We have got to get better on the offensive line. Um, we have got to do better there. We cannot run the football. ETN is running hard. He's making guys miss. He leads the NFL, and breaking tackles, but my goodness gracious, the Colts gave us fits in both games this year. You're looking at Trevor's top targets today, and you'll see wasn't a lot of passing yards, only 181. Who led the way, Liv? Christian Kirk, he had that one touchdown reception. He had 49 yards on, what, three catches? Ingram had seven receptions, including a beautiful one-handed reception down the sideline early in the game, but only 41 yards. Again, the Jags did not do a good job of getting the ball down the field. I, I feel like I'm crazy here because I'm sitting here criticizing this football team that just won by 17. It's their first home win of the year, so that's a positive as well. And that's certainly some good news. Uh, let's hear from Brent now, who talked to Josh Allen, who had another strip sack uh, today to help the club. 
And the Jaguars with another big time defensive performance, and it started with this guy strip sack from early in the game. The guy set the tone. And that's uh that's what we gotta do with the defense, man. We can't be waiting for somebody to make the play. You know, we we we, we gotta step up. Everybody to do. You know, it's my opportunity to go make a play, and uh, I'm glad I made it for my team. You guys are starting fast, not giving up a lot of points in the first half defensively. Is it a good game plan you're putting together and working early? Man, of course, man. I think Coach Caldwell has a great scheme. I mean, the staff, the whole staff as a whole, put in a lot of input in this. Players, as play, we us as players too have a lot of input in what goes in, man. So I think we continue to grow, continue to communicate. Uh, man, we can stop anybody, but we can't. We want to be great, man. We can't let them score. Opportunistic guys making plays all over the place. Look like Devin Lloyd and Lewikin in the middle. Yeah, I mean just everywhere, all levels right now. Man, that's what we got to do, man. Our goal was to stop the run, hold them under 50 yards, and go and go rush the passer, man. Create takeaways. We did what we were supposed to do when we stopped the run, pressure the quarterback, get takeaways. There's a good chance we're gonna win the game, and it's exactly what we did, and we're gonna handle business. That's our motto. Thanks, man. Go celebrate, yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Jaguars get the win, and Josh Allen now seven sacks on this season. Another a very good defensive effort by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars did have three sacks today, but again, Minshew threw it 55 times, so I don't know if that's good or bad. I mean, they got to the quarterback three times. Allen had one. Um, Caleb on chase on got his second of the year. Go figure, a career high. And uh, Roy Robertson, Harris, and Trayvon Walker, I think, teamed up for a sack. They each got a half. And Roy Robertson Harris is sacked, by the way. I think he's the first Jaguar not named, um, not named Allen or Walker or Chason, who's had a sack this year. So some pretty good stuff uh, from him. Uh, but the Jags are tough to run on. That's the that's the good news. They're next to impossible to run the football on, and that's going to have to be the Colts' strength going forward. So that was a huge positive for the Jaguars today. And then things got. Not dicey, but a little nerve, nervous in the second half. Colts started to kind of come back a little bit. Well, Jamal Agnew made a great special teams play on a kickoff return and took one back 53 yards. That led the Jags to a field goal. And the Colts got the ball, and the Jags stopped them on four downs. Liv, what were the Colts today on fourth down? Yeah, fourth down. We're checking right now because they converted about three or four of them. Three of six on fourth down. That means three different times, though, the Jags got the ball back. So that was the good news. But three times the Colts were able to convert. And I think one of their touchdowns was a fourth down pass, if I'm not mistaken. So, again, they got within striking distance, two scores. and uh, But in the end, the Jags were able to uh, get it done and get the victory by a final score of 37 to 20. You're looking at some of the game notes right now uh, from this game. Uh, and you'll see that, again, it wasn't like a dominating offensive performance yet. It did lead to 37 points. So uh, we'll take it. We'll take four and two. We'll take a three-game winning streak. And we got a short work week now. Got to get ready for the New Orleans Saints coming up. And New Orleans, I think, lost to Houston, if I'm not mistaken. So if that's the case, they'll come in hungry at home. And the Jags will have their hands full. But we're awaiting news on Trevor Lawrence. He looked OK, but he did not go back in the game. And it was announced in the press box that he had a knee injury. So, and you could tell he was slow getting up on that sack. Really unnecessary play at game's end. And Doug Peterson will come to the podium here in a couple minutes. And we'll hear exactly what he has to say about the franchise. Because obviously everything changes if Trevor can't play on Thursday night. And the only reason I suggest that is because it's a short week. But he was moving around here on the field behind me at game's end. Congratulating his teammates and some Colts players as well. So... Hopefully he's okay. He's a tough kid, and he usually plays through a lot of nicks and bumps, but hopefully it's not. there's no sprain in there or anything like that. Hopefully they don't even have to take an MRI, but we'll find out more here from, from Doug Peterson on Trevor Lawrence and what exactly happened on that last play. It was one of those where he takes it, rolls out, and bootlegs across, but the Colts didn't fall for it. They chased him down. He had nowhere to go, and he got sacked for a 17-yard loss. Again, thank goodness Brandon McManus was able to knock through a couple 50-yard field goals because that was about as close as the Jaguars were going to get in that fourth quarter. So they got points when they needed to, but they had a comfortable 31-6 lead at one point that suddenly was 31-20. So uh, good win for the Jags. Good win. Don't want to discount it. And 
Let's look at the South standings right now. And I will tell you, by the way, the Cleveland Browns just took the lead on the San Francisco 49ers, 19-17, but there's still a minute 40 to go in that game. So it ain't over there in, uh, in Cleveland, which is interesting. But if we look at the South with a win four and two and a two-game lead over the Colts, who are three and three, Houston, though, is nipping at our heels. They're three and three. Is that correct, Liv? Did they beat the Saints? All right, so they also are three and three. The Titans are bringing up the rear right now at two and four uh, by virtue of their loss today to Baltimore, and they got a long flight home. Who do they play next week, Liv? All right, so the Titans will play the Falcons. You know we go Thursday against the Saints. Who does Houston play? Houston and the Panthers, so Houston have a real chance to go to four and three, and then the Colts with Gardner Minshew. Who? Take on the Cleveland Browns. So that's what faces those teams uh, going forward. And we also learned today that it looks like he was here. Anthony Richardson made the trip, but we also learned that he most likely is done for the season. And that, in effect, will knock the Colts out of any chance of competing in the AFC South, in my opinion. Gardner Minshew is a good, serviceable backup quarterback. But if you have to go with him for the whole way, you're going to be in trouble. Brett catching up with Roy Robertson Harris. Let's hear from RRH right now as we await Doug Peterson. Were you surprised they came out throwing as much and didn't lean on the run with those two backs? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, we expected a little bit more run, but the times that they did run, we shut them down. We had a couple had a couple plays um, off, but um, you know we shut the run down, made them one dimensional, got some got some picks, got a few sacks in there. So we trying to stack them, like I said, stack them. What's it show about the mentality of this team? The two in Say London, again? the mentality of this team, the two in London, come back here and, and take care of business the way you did. We got to make sure we come home and win. You know, we lost the first two at home. And, uh, you know, division opponent at home, we got to win those. And so, uh, man, like I say, we stacking days. We came out and, and got a big victory. Now it's time to get ready for a short week. There's some concern about Trevor at all in here? No concern, man. You know, Tre Trevor's a good, he's a dude, man. That's all that matter. He going to do his thing. Thanks, man. All right, that's Roy Robertson Harris with Brent Martineau. Trev is a dude, but we need to hear that the dude's okay. And we're hoping to hear that the dude's okay from Doug Peterson here momentarily. Uh, we'll be able to find out here when Doug takes the podium. If you hear the words MRI or the letters MRI, it won't be, that's not great news. So let's hope he doesn't even need one. It's just, you know, got banged up or got hit on it and he's okay. But again, that's what we're awaiting a word on. So we'll hear from him in just a second uh, when he takes the podium. Roy Robertson Harris is right about one thing. The Jags are one of the top five teams in the NFL in stopping the run. So while Harris and Fadakasi don't exactly get after the quarterback, man, they are terrific. That's Jonathan Taylor on the other side. And the other running back last week had 160 yards. So, again, it was interesting that the Colts came out trying to throw the football against the Jags. You would have thought they would have tried to run it. So it was not meant to be uh, for the Colts. An interesting game plan from Shane Steichen, their first-year coach. Uh, here comes Doug Peterson now. He is walking up to the podium. Let's listen in on the Jaguars coach. We want to play you the entire thing and hear what he has to say about Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> All right, answer, answer the questions. Should we ask one? <laughs> this is Brody. Okay, you good? Yeah. Hey, you got a sure. Brody? <laughs> Doug, yeah. yes. Uh, can you start us off with uh, an update on Trevor? I don't have an update yet. Okay. How did you think he played, and and was there any uh, second thoughts on the play call where he's rolling out late in the game? Um, I thought he played really well. Um, you know, as far as that play call, I mean, those are situations that we, you know, we we understand too. We we were trying to get a, a short sack. Not necessarily try to circle the defense. So uh, part of it's on us, part of it's on Trevor. But at the same time, we got to be smart there. But um, I thought he played played extremely well. Saw the field again really well. Threw the ball well. Uh, just the one miscommunication with uh, with Christian for the interception. But uh, you know we'll clean that up. Indy comes out 16 plays, eight and a half minutes. Uh, how important was it to respond immediately, even though the score came early in the second quarter? It almost matched him. I think the drive went more than seven minutes. Yeah, I mean, 
obviously we we try to start the games fast. Um, you know, it was a good drive by them. I mean, they they, they mixed it up. I mean, ball was out of you know uh, Gardner's hand extremely fast, and you know they did a nice job. They stayed first down, second down, first down, and you know went down defense. You know, obviously um, in the red zone stopped. You know, kept them to three there. Uh, but it was it was good. It was good for our offense to respond there and, and get the touchdown. And, and um, um, you know, just just pleased with the effort. You know, especially in the first half of uh, you know defensively creating takeaways and offense scoring. You know, and that's something we haven't really been able to do. You know, score in the red zone, and, and we were able to do that, and we were able to actually score. You know, even further out on a couple of plays. So that that was good to see too. Doug, uh, four four turnovers saved by the defense, 15 on the year. I mean, how good of a job are they doing, and how important is that, obviously, to get those turnovers? Yeah, I mean, the defense sometimes doesn't get enough credit for that. You know, the takeaways are something that we, um, as a team, talk about. They talk about it as a as a defense, and and um, it just it, it it just shortens the field for your offense, right? And and um, pass rush again today. There was pressure on Gardner. You know putting in, in places maybe he didn't want it to go. And again, just uh, a great team effort on defense to uh, uh, play the way they did today. Oh, yeah, uh, the, the effort, the intensity, uh, the guys responded, um, you know, and really all week. Um, you know, it is hard. It's hard to when you're over there for ten days and your bodies are used to that, that, that time change and coming back here it takes it takes a little while, you know, it takes several days to get back um, you know, back on East Coast time. But the guys handled the week extremely well, proud of them. Uh, they had a lot of energy again today and uh, that was really good to see. Now we have got a short week, so you know, um, we gotta keep that rolling. Can you uh, talk about was it a concerted effort to get Brenton Strange in the passing game this week, or was that just something that organically no, happened I mean, today? We, it kind of more organically happened. You know, we, we, every week we've got opportunities, you know, for him to catch the football, um, and it just happened this week was the week. So it's nothing that we schemed up, you know, specifically for him. But uh, there are plays that have been in each week, and we finally were able to get to him and, and call him. Doug, do you have an update on the other two guys, uh, Tyson Not and, and Brandon? Okay. Yeah, uh, so how, I'll have it for you tomorrow. On a day like today where you have a couple guys go down, does that change your approach to this week, or was your approach going to be so light anyway? How do you it, get it, ready it for it? It doesn't matter. I mean, the, the week's the week, right? I mean, um, they anybody that got nicked up in this game, they just got to live in the training room, you know, and, and get treatment 24-7. And, and um, you know, uh, it's just a, it's the nature of the week, right? We we, we – we slow things down. It becomes more of a mental day. We're trying to get everybody, you know, as healthy as we can. You know, going into Thursday, it's on the road um, against a good football team. So, yeah, it doesn't change the nature of the week. Was the initial fear on Trevor that it was pretty severe, or in the initial concern level for you when you saw it happen, or when he came off? Or? Um, I mean, you know, I guess it's the same level of concern as when Brandon went down. You know, I'm always concerned for my players, you know, when they, when they go down in situations like that. Um, you know, and, and Tyson's the same way. You know, it, it's just unfortunate there. But, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see where they're at here uh, later tonight and probably have an update or we'll have an update for you tomorrow. Doug, there's going to be people, there will be people asking why weren't you running the ball right there, just running it in the line and eating up 40 seconds. Can you just explain why, why that call was in? Well, that calls in the game plan because um, it's a movement play. It allows the quarterback to get on the edge uh, in situations like that. Sometimes, he, you know, listen, it, it, you know, you've seen it, you've seen it work a million times, right? And a million and one, it didn't work. Uh, but we were able to get three points out of it. So, um, from that standpoint, it was effective. You know, it's just, and look, you, you, you is there a little bit of risk there to, to, you know, run your quarterback? Yes. Uh, but at the same time, the, the, the reward is you get the first down and you stay on the field and you ice the game in those situations. So uh, definitely wouldn't change, you know, the, the scenario, the situation. Uh, we can coach that a little bit better and, and ask him maybe to go down a little bit sooner. Uh, Doug, I, obviously the defense, as you mentioned, had a tr tremendous game. But I want to ask about the fourth quarter, ask you about that, because obviously not many teams go backwards 17 yards to get a field goal out of the whole deal. Uh, that What was your assessment of the fourth quarter? Does it take anything away going into New Orleans on Thursday? No. Um, you know, uh, obviously, 
Yeah, you'd, you'd love to not give up that many yards on one particular play, but um, you know the fact that you know Brandon was kicking the ball extremely well, so getting the three points there was was big. It, it stretched the lead. Um, you know, so I mean, it, it the fourth quarter. You know, we we knew they were going to be in you know four downs the rest of the game. Um, you know, so so the defense could really put the put the pressure in the pass. You know, with the pass rush and and. Um, Again, creating the takeaways they did and, and putting the offense in short in short fields. I would much rather some of those things. I mean, you know, you'd rather have touchdowns, obviously, in situations like that. But coming away with points were big. Doug, are these three games kind of what you guys thought you would be or could be going into the season? What we've seen these last three weeks. I, I think it's a glimpse of what we can be. Um, you know, there's still some areas that we have to we have to clean up, obviously. But you know, I think I think the team is. Really, in these last three weeks, um, kind of figured some things out and who we are as a football team, and um, and, and that's exciting to see. They, they've really embraced that, and um, you know, to come away with three wins, especially after the two losses we had, um, is is pretty special for the for these guys. So, I think we're figuring that out, um, you know. But again, it's you know six weeks in and a lot of football ahead. Can you uh, touch on Josh Allen? He had a strip sack today. He's been the most consistent pass rusher you've had. It's a contract year. He's been uh, pretty good the first six games of this season. Just talk on his play. Yeah, yeah Josh is Josh is you know heart and soul on defense, and and um, he's been playing extremely well. And and it's 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 uh, it's good to see. You know, um, there were a lot of things I think um, <clears throat> he probably felt a little. You know, pressure maybe to start the season to, to perform, and, and he's answered. He's answered that, and and um, you know he, he works hard during the week, and so it's no it's no surprise that this is what he's capable of doing, and and um, you know just continues to to find ways to, to get around the quarterback to affect the quarterback. Uh, it it obviously impacts the defense. You know when he's creating uh, the plays that he's doing, either a tackle for loss or a you know a, a strip sack, fumble, things of those nature. Things of that nature, I, I, you know. And so it's just a, it's a credit to Josh, you know, and, and, and how he's how he's getting himself ready to play. Last question, uh, Doug. You've been here almost a year and a half. Three straight weeks now, halftime leads. Two of those double digit leads. That's that's really rare uh, for this franchise. What what's it been like coaching with the lead as opposed to what you're used to coming from behind? Um. It's it's never satisfying. It's still nerve wracking. Um, this is the NFL, and, and you see it each week where a team's way up and the other team comes back. Right? Even in college football, it happens. And you know, obviously, yeah, you're you're excited. Team's playing well. You know, you've got that type of lead at halftime. But you know, the message has always been and always will be that, that we've got to finish the game. Right? And and I think there was a little bit of a lull offensively to start the third quarter. I think we went three and out right there. And um, you know, those are things that we have to we have to fix. That's one of the areas that we have to address, right? You you want to come out in third third quarter there with the ball and and try to go down and get get points if possible. So, um, you know, the game's never over. Game's never out of reach. Um, it's evident, obviously, we experienced that a year ago. And so, you know, my message to the team is always: we got to continue to play for sixty minutes. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Thank you. Congrats. All right, that's Doug Peterson, the head coach of the Jaguars. Now, again, we're talking about three significant injuries in terms of we don't know the length and how long, but three significant players, I should say. Tyson Campbell, Brandon Sheriff, and Trevor Lawrence. He talked about and defended about his play call on the one when Mark Long of the Associated Press asked him, why not just run the ball up the middle and kill some clock? And he said, ah, we've run it a million times. That play, we'll run it a million and one, and he got nicked up, so we shall see. All right, we got more interviews, so let's play some of them now, Liv. Who do you want to run? We have Foyer? Foyer Aluakon all over the field today. Let's hear from him. He's with Brent. Well, uh, it looked like you guys had a pretty good game plan and executed it well. We executed it well. We're still working. 
Us versus us, being able to go all the way through the game, you know, when they get back uh, the, behind the eight ball there, expecting those pass plays, being able to plaster and stuff. Uh, it's always room for us to grow, but it was a good game with turnovers and stuff. Looked like 23 and 33 were all over the place. So what did you see from uh, your counterpart? We were talking about energy all, all week. You know, and he missed a London trip, so I could tell he was bummed about it. I said we had a lot of energy out there, and he, you know, was even challenging us to keep that same energy all week. So I definitely appreciate him out there. And he, he put his um, a lot of studying in while he was gone and stuff. And he just came back. I said, you know, just help us out. He, he wanted to make his part, uh, you know, coming into this game known. And that's what he did today. Why are you guys so good against the run so far this year? That's what we put our standard on right now for all every game. But it's, it's a week-to-week -week thing. Like, uh, team's going to try to run it. We got to stop it. Were you a little surprised they didn't try to run it more in the early going? Yeah, I was surprised. I was. I don't know. Yeah, I, I was. I, I, I keep asking about opportunistic defense, but, I mean, you guys just keep getting your hands on the football, it seems. I mean, that's just the, the nature of this defense, the identity. Yeah, I mean, we've been talking about this uh, kind of last year, uh, turnovers. You get the crazy stat Coach Suck can tell you about, but get turnover, get that ball back to that explosive offense. That's what we're trying to do. Regardless of what they do in the drive, we get the ball back, give an extra possession to the offense. You know, it's a plus for us. That's three in a row for the team. Is that getting on the track for where you guys want to be? It's a week-to-week -week thing, man. We got to work on, you know, we've got a short week, so handle what comes with that. Uh, we got a good uh, Saints team down in New Orleans. And then we play, uh, me and Cal have been playing in New Orleans, the, you know, the uh, environment and stuff. So we got to handle everything that comes with that and be ready to go. You talked about the energy this week. You said, uh, was the energy on the field at the level that you guys expected it to be? We came out the right way for sure. Uh, they had a little driver that were dinking and dunking that we wasn't expecting. Came back, you know, talked about what we needed to do, and then, you know, we started playing well. All right, that is Foye Aluakon at a boatload of tackles today. You know who else played well on defense? Devin Lloyd. He's been gone for a couple of weeks. Remember, he hurt his hand, had some surgery on his thumb. Well, he returned to the lineup today. He talked with Brent as well just a couple minutes ago. Well, uh, welcome back to the lineup, man. A lot of energy out there today. Yeah, it just felt good being back, you know, especially being away from the game, man. You're just so ready to get back. Felt like uh, I said the foyer, 33 and 23 were just about around every play that day. Did you guys feel that way? Yeah, it was great communication. Um, you know, everybody was flying to the ball. I mean, we just were in sync today. The the juice was up and it, it stayed up, and um, you know, everybody had a really good game. You get your hands on uh, three of them with a good thumb. You you get one or two of them. Yeah, of course, but uh, I don't even want to use that as an excuse. You know, i got to come down with those. Um, yeah. What's it like playing with it? I mean, is it a little bit of a mental hurdle at all uh, anyway, or no, didn't matter? No mental hurdle, um, but it's definitely a difference. You, you, you know, I mean, even the gripping aspect of it, you know, you, you definitely can't grip, you know, like you're used to uh, doing, securing it. But um, like I said, no excuse. Why is this defense playing at such a high level right now? Um, I think we're just playing with great energy. Uh, communication is we're all dialed in. You know, we're, we're getting a call out. Um, you know, you know, Mike is coming in, and I um, mean, he's putting us in position to succeed. And everybody's just winning their one-on-ones, and uh, we're playing complimentary ball. Fair to say the identity is is working out. Stop the run, get the football. Yeah, stop the run, and then pressure the quarterback and create takeaways. All right, uh, great job by the defense today. Again, it was Gardner Minshew, backup quarterback. Jags eventually figured him out, took away the short stuff, made him go deep, and they intercepted. They feasted on Minshew. All right, we go to the offensive line. Depleted, not playing particularly great, but Tyler Shatley always there, always ready, and talking with Brent after the game. But what, does this record mean anything to you? 129 in a row? Yeah, um... Obviously, it's just like I told them earlier. I mean, I mean, what a blessing to be able to be here this long. You know, one team uh, uh, to be healthy that long. To you know, uh, also for you know, front office believing in me, keeping me around. So, um, just really appreciative for the opportunity, and uh, just glad. Yeah, glad I could still be. Glad I can still play. You know, does it feel good to be able to contribute the way you have over the years? Special teams, left guard, center. Right guard. I mean, heck, we're seeing it with 73, the, your locker mate now doing similar things. Yeah, it feels good, obviously, because you know you want to contribute. Um, and uh, yeah, it feels good to be able to get in there. You know, like you said, obviously, Blake played really well today, stepped in, and uh, it's cool to see that. And, you know, and like we, I think we talked about this earlier with, uh, you know, kind of the next man up mentality, especially on the offensive line. You know, 
Uh, but it's a good day, you know, good to get a team win. Does it give you any more perspective, uh, any more feel good about this record on the heels of what happened to you in August? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I, I just remember I had that thought, honestly. I was in the hospital just saying, man, like, it could be gone like that. And like I said earlier, like, you know, what a blessing it is just to be healthy this long and to uh, still be able to play. So, yeah, uh, um, definitely feels good to be able to do that. You guys uh, feel like you're on a bit of a roll now with three in a row? Yeah, um, obviously it feels good to get three in a row, uh, but we're just trying, you know, trying to focus on one game at a time um, and just really focus on what we need to do to, uh, you know, we got a short week this week and get ready for New Orleans. They got a good team, so uh, got to get ready. All right, Jaguars winners today, 37 to 20 over the Colts, three victories in a row, stacking some wins. Uh, one reason why Brett Marno thinks Travis Etienne is the one of most underrated football players in the NFL. He talked with the media just minutes ago. Let's hear from Travis and his two touchdown performance today. Travis, has anything changed? Because the last three games, you guys have been jumping on people. I mean, and that hadn't been the case early. It just better execution, attention to detail. What is anything changing? It just means more. We just started executing better. We started locking in on the plays, and we just started playing football. I felt like we simplified it, and everybody just started playing football, and everybody just come out there, and it's all about doing your job. And when we all do our job, just we come out here and play great. This was the time of year last year you really started to take off. Is there something about this part of the season where you feel like you're getting a groove? I mean, not really. I'm trying, I'm trying to be in a groove week in and week out. Uh, it's, it's a week-by-week -week basis, and uh, we play great defenses every week. And uh, we just got to see what the defense give you. And um, I'm just grateful to have my office alignment just doing a great job for me, a great job for Trev. And uh, we just kind of feed off each other and uh, just have them get this thing rolling. A great couple of days in the ETN family, isn't it? All right, so we both got W, so they got their first uh, road win. We got our first home and so grateful for that. Do you have to manage things a little bit differently? Two games in London, I think you had 53 touches, maybe not as many today, but then you got a short week. I mean, that's a lot of football. So do you have to do anything extra to take care of your body and manage it? Nah, man, I get paid to play football. All I do is take care of my body and play football. So I feel like I just continue to keep doing what I've been doing. And, um, I mean, as a running back, as a guy, you, you want that. You know, you want that. I feel like this is why I play the game, uh, to get those touches. So I just got to just lock in and just continue to do what I've been doing to stay healthy. That's the biggest thing. Any concern about Trevor? Uh, nah, Trevor's a warrior. He's going to fight back. <laughs> Nobody's worried about Trevor. Uh, except the fans, probably, but hopefully he's okay. Again, we'll have all the full wrap up coming up on an Action Sports Jacks primetime. Jaguars get the victory. A little bit costly, some big injuries, name injuries. Tyson Campbell, Brandon Sheriff, Trevor Lawrence. So Lawrence twisted his knee at the at the end of the game. He was walking around under his own power, so didn't look to be too severe, but they do have a game in four days. So that remains to be seen. The Jaguars go to New Orleans on Thursday night to take on the Saints. So uh, quite a challenge, quite a turnaround, and we'll see. Doug Peterson said he had no update on Trevor's status. We'll await on that and pass it on as soon as we hear something from you. Don't forget, we got Action Sports Jacks primetime. That's coming up tonight, 1030 on Fox 30, 1130 on CBS 47. We'll wrap up and have more for you on the Jaguars' victory here today at the bank. Their first here in Jacksonville, Florida, in game number six. Here comes Trevor Lawrence right now. So before we run, let's listen in on Trevor and see what he can tell us about that knee. Trevor, uh, could you just uh, talk about how, you, how you're feeling and any, uh, any concerns whatsoever about you not suiting up Thursday night? You know, I'm, I'm feeling okay. Um, I'm going get it, to get it checked out, you know, tonight and, and see kind of what's going on. I feel pretty good. I'm walking around all right. So I uh, can't really say much now. I don't really you know, want to make sure everything's checked out before. Have you, have you really had any issues with it before in your, in your football life? No, I haven't. I haven't. So that's also what makes it tough. And it's a little bit bruised, too. So just trying to kind of sort through kind of what it is right now. Can you just kind of run us through what happened on that play? And, and uh, I know, like, you were on the ground. You kind of, like, picked up your leg a little bit and what your fear was or anything like that. Yeah, I just felt something, you know, just some discomfort in my knee when I went down. I don't know if it was twisted or landed on or what. Um, so I kind of felt it right away and then kind of put a little pressure on it. I realized I can get up, so I was just trying to get up and get off and you know, get off the field. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's all it was there. 
Trevor, can you uh, talk just a little bit about the offense today and what went right for you guys? Yeah, I thought we had a really good first half. Um, we took advantage of a lot of short fields that the defense had given us, which was which was great. Our defense is playing great right now. Um, and I thought we put some some really good drives together, the, especially the first drive coming out. I think that was I don't know how long. You know, they had a long drive and ended up getting a field goal, and then we came out had a long drive and ended up scoring a touchdown. I thought that really kind of set the tone um, that we can play that type of game if, if that's what we need to do. So that was that was big for us. On the second half, you know, we. I just didn't think that we um, necessarily put them away when we had opportunities, and I think we played great. Uh, but the first half, you know, defense giving us short field, taking advantage of them, getting points. Thought we were really efficient. Thought we played really well in the first half. So, um, you know, second half need to play a little bit better. But the the goal is to win, and we won um, pretty convincingly, and it was a good win for this team, a huge game for us, and I'm excited about that. Trevor, when you look at the three game winning streak, is this kind of who you guys thought you? could be and would be going into the season? Yeah, I mean, I think that this is where we want to be. You know, we're, we're getting better every week. I think that's the, that's the most exciting thing is we're getting better every week. We're, we're getting closer. I feel like the momentum and the energy is really rolling for us, and we got to keep that going every week. You know, now especially it's a short week on the road, um, so it's the same, same mindset. we got to make sure we dial in on all the details, get our bodies back for this, for this game coming up on Thursday. I mean, now it's three, four days away, so we got to get ready for that one. Trevor, congrats on the victory, first off. Uh, the, you know, as you mentioned, the first half, everything just seemed to go right, but get to that fourth quarter. Um, how disappointed are you to go into New Orleans on, on that? You got points, but again, you mentioned the defense and the, the field uh, that gave you for that. And uh, also the fact that did it look like the Colts were just playing like a desperate team just trying to make a play at that point? Um, you know, I'm not, not too disappointed. I, mean, I am disappointed in that I feel like we kind of had some drives where we were had a little lull in our, in our offense. So I think that's – obviously you never want that to happen. But it's also tough in that, in that position. You know, we can do a better job situationally. Like we need first downs. We still need to move the ball. We need to get points. But when you got that big of a lead, you're, you're trying to possess the ball, trying to keep it out of their hands, just trying – so you're playing – it's like a balancing act of – you know, do you stay, how aggressive do you stay, all those things. And I think that's something where we need to be better executing. We were really bad on first down in the, first, in the fourth quarter. So put us in second and long, and then they can kind of do whatever they want. They can, they can drop out, play zone coverage, like make, make you throw it underneath. They can pressure you, um, put you in a tougher position. So I think we've got to be better on first down in those situations. And then, um, you know, I'm never going to be too disappointed in a win, though. It's hard to win in this league, and especially division games. And this is a, that's, a, that's a good team. You know, they're 2-1 and one in the division coming into today. So it was a big win for us. Uh, so looking now we're turning the page on to New Orleans. But, um, yeah, you could tell at the end they were trying to dial some stuff up to try to get the ball back and give themselves a shot. Christian said uh, he saw you saw something in week one that the Colts did in, in coverage and you took advantage of it this time on the touchdown to him. Could you tell us uh, what, what did you see that time around and, and how did you get that score? Yeah, it was just something, you know, we, we'd, we'd been in empty a few times in the first game and there were some, some things that I saw, especially after watching it and then going back this week preparing for him again. Where I saw just in how they played their coverage and they, they play their same coverage 70% of the game. Then they'll mix it up a little bit, but they want to play their three deep type coverage. And I thought we had a we had I had a little tell on just if I can if I can set outside and get this corner to tie down. He's really the the three deep. He's the deep third player. So if he ties down, there's really no one left for Christian. So that's what we talked about this week. And you know that was something that I felt really confident that we would get. And I showed him all the clips and. Honestly, happened exactly how we thought it would. It doesn't always work that way when you think something's going to work, but uh, it was cool that it that it happened that way today. Trevor, four turnovers that the defense created today. You scored on three of them. Just what you can say about total team football? It's huge. I think that's the thing. Uh, it's, we're playing complimentary. We've done that the last three weeks now, and we've won all three of those games. It's kind of you know it, it definitely t it ties together and. You know, even today, I don't think I don't know what the stats were, but you know we were good in the first half. Second half didn't move the ball much, didn't have a ton of yards. But when you have the turnovers and you're scoring off turnovers that the defense is providing, and you, you know, it doesn't look like necessarily you look at the stat sheet that we played that great, but you look at the turnover margin and you look at the points off turnovers, and that's huge. And we're just playing really complimentary. That's what the good teams do. You take advantage when other teams when the other team makes mistakes, um, and you limit your mistakes. And that's what I think we're doing a better job of th through these last three games.
<coughs> Trevor, obviously a win's a win. Um, but I know Doug has said that you pass to score, you run to win on this team. Did you feel like you guys did that today, in particular in the second half? Um, not, not necessarily in the second half. I think in the first half we did. I thought we were really efficient. We were moving the ball. Um, we were attacking, you know, all those things. You know, you could, you could probably tell watching the game. That's what it felt like. Um, and then in the second half, I just think that we got to execute better, like I said, whether that's on first down, not having a, a negative play or, or whatever it is, not having a miscommunication with me and Christian. You know, that's something where we've, we've played a lot together now, and we have to be better, and I have to be better at, at you know, making things clear in that situation. They did a good job, brought up pressure, and, you know, we were able to, that's the one thing you don't want is in that situation to turn it over in our territory and give them the ball back there. That's really the only way they have a chance is if you give them turnovers and, you know, you don't execute on offense. So that was something where definitely need to clean up, and that's something that we can take away from to get better at. But we did everything we needed to do to win, and we took advantage of the opportunities that we had. When we had a short field, we scored, um, and that was just, that was kind of the story today. Mike Brodsky, Florida National News. Uh, last year, Trevor, you celebrated uh, a playoff victory at uh, Waffle House. Uh, for this season, have you identified any, uh, any pl have you identified any places where you might actually celebrate uh, any of the key victories for the Jaguars? And also, how did you celebrate the two London victories as well? Um, and I haven't I haven't picked the, the spot that we're going to celebrate this year yet. Uh, still early. We got a lot of work to do before we get there. But um, no, I haven't. That's a good question. And then for my birth or not for my birthday for sorry, my birthday was in London. But for the two London wins, didn't really do much. We're trying to get back and get our bodies back on this time here, the five hour time change, all that. So we we're kind of just trying to recover and keep this momentum going. But um, now I have some family in town, so hung out with them a little bit and, and Marissa obviously. So that was that was good. Uh, Trevor, everybody knows that Josh Allen is in a, is in a contract year. Uh, can you even imagine a locker room there next year without Josh Allen in it? No, I mean, he's a huge part of this team. Um, I mean, just brings a lot of energy, uh, has that intensity, that look in his eyes every day, whether it's practice, Sunday, whenever. Um, just brings a lot of energy to our team, to the defense, and he's playing He's playing great right now. And, I mean, that's you need guys like that, especially – pass rushers, guys on the D-line, and he's, he's bringing that for us. Uh, uh, follow up, how much respect does he command because of the fact that he was here even before you were and, and went through some, the, the team was going through some really tough times, not that you haven't gone through it yourself, but, but the fact that he's been through a lot of that. I think, you know, guys respect, guys res respect uh, players based on, Really, their their work ethic, how they come to work every day, and obviously performance is a big part of that too. You got to to command the respect. You got to take care of your business on the field too. So he does all those things. He he works extremely hard. He's a great example for young guys coming in. Uh, I know he was that way when I came in. It's just a guy you can look to that's going to do things the right way. So he he commands a lot of respect in that locker room. Guys guys respect his opinion, what he thinks, the way he carries himself. Um, and then especially the guys that have been here now for a few years have been through the, the good and the bad times and all that. I think they have a, a great perspective on, you know, I guess where we're at right now. And I think that's that's an important thing. We got a lot of guys that have been here for a long time that have that perspective. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. thanks. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right, that's Trevor Lawrence and his comments live. Uh, you heard him say thinks he's okay. We'll find out more. He's got to get it checked out, though, and that means probably an MRI and see what, how it is. I, I'm pretty sure they probably know what's wrong with it already, but they'll get it checked out, and hopefully it'll, uh, it'll be okay and he'll be able to play on Thursday night. So, again, short work week, that's the concerning thing. Tyson Campbell also injured, Brandon Sheriff. So we'll know more tomorrow. Short work week coming up for the Jags. But today, right now, celebrate the win, 37-20 to 20 over the Indianapolis Colts. Jags improve to 4-2 and two on this season, first place in the AFC South. Thanks for hanging with us on the postgame show. We'll be back a little bit later tonight on Action Sports Jacks primetime with the very latest. For now, Dan Hicken signing off from the bank. See ya. Jags Nation. Thanks for watching the Action Sports Jacks post game show. Sponsored by Farah and Farah, the exclusive injury law firm of the Jaguars.